The Freedom First Olympic Second campaign was kicked off in early 2007. This campaign's goal, China must be free before it is the host for the Olympic Games. I'm joined today by John Kuzumi, Direct Emeritus of China Support Network, who is behind Freedom First Olympic Second Coalition. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me. Now, John, you uh, bring this uh, with you as your logo, which said in China, uh, in Chinese said Freedom First and Olympic Second. And you are creating this logo just as the Olympic logo, but with a club here. Now, the Freedom First Olympic Second, your goal is make sure the freedom happens first. If not, you guys will want to boycott Olympics, right? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, it's, it's good to to get that question out on the table immediately, is this a call for a boycott? If there is freedom first, then we are fine with having the Olympics. Okay. Uh, but in the absence of freedom, and, and it's the situation that China has today, uh, then no, uh, we are, we are uh, against the Olympics and calling for a boycott. Now, when we uh, talk about China, I inter interviewed quite a few people, when we talk about China, when we talk especially talk about the U.S. dealing with China, everybody said it's difficult these days because so much commercial interest behind it. And look at the Beijing Olympic uh, sponsors, I have a list here, such as like uh, well-known companies like Coca-Cola, GE, Johnson & Johnson, Visa, UPS, Staples, you know, how, how do you get your message crossed without falling into the deaf ear of corporate America? This is a movement really for citizens. This is on behalf of human rights. And that means, you know, people, the rights of people, not, uh, not corporations, on the other hand. So I think that corporate America is really not the place where we will go searching for support, you know, uh, while we would love to have, you know, their, their good wishes for our campaign, uh, we realize that the Olympics are a commercial occasion and that a, a lot of money is to be made, uh, particularly by, you know, NBC, uh, General Electric, mm -hmm. uh, and, oh, yeah. and, and some sponsors. Yes, yeah, so far, uh, you know, Beijing want to make next year's Olympic the most successful one. But so far, they, I think they're most uh, commercially successful. They have got like $1.5 billion sponsorship so far, and that's probably the most in, you know, in the history. Um, now, in bid for 2008 Summer Olympic, Beijing said they, they drew a history, a historical parallel with the 1988 Seoul game. When Seoul get the right to host the 1988 game in 1981, mm -hmm. uh, Korea was a military dictatorship. But in 1987, one year before the Summer Olympics, they held the first presidential uh, election, which many think is a fair. And uh, then we have a democracy in South Korea. And do you think the same thing will happen in China? Well, I think that China should do the same thing immediately. It would be ideal if they would hold a presidential election this year. Yeah. Um, now, of course, you know, how realistic is that thought, you know, within a, a political situation? Uh, that's a different question. But uh, very certainly, China should, uh, you know, move to adopt uh, freedom and, and human rights and, and democratic government. Uh, that's the uh, underlying point or the purpose of this coalition is that we are pressing for just that. Well, what if they don't do it? Usually they get their ways by just ignoring well, groups like, like yours. It's, it's indeed true that the, the dictators you know, turn a deaf ear to many appeals, mm -hmm. um, but they also have their own political situation you know, domestically, inside of China, um, you know, there are pressures, in fact, enormous pressures uh, of, of, you know, popular uh, discontent, you know, uh, of uprisings among, you know, farmers losing their land or, or, or the residents in Beijing who have lost their land, uh, you know, in preparation for the Olympics. They have so many pressures inside of China you know, that they really ought to be reviewing their options. They really ought to reconsider you know their position mm -hmm. um, about China's future because uh, it is actually in their uh, better interest in other words uh, this is like a solution you know for how to overcome some of those pressures uh, that are, are you know 
bearing down upon the dictators of yes, Beijing. Yes, based on our reporters over there, based on our source, there's many, uh, there are many uh, discontent voice in China society, and many even said, we want rights, we don't want Olympics, and most of them, and many of them, they lose their their land because of the Olympic uh, buildings going on, development going on, and many people said because, but unfortunately China does not have a free uh, uh, freedom on a speech and freedom on, on the press, so the, in, the, uh, the outside world do not hear their voice, and their voice is very good, very difficult to get across. Now, here let me let me say this: if you know China, for, for people like you, China will have ways to dealing with people like you and an organization like you, and out of their textbook, they will say number one. You are politicizing the Olympic game. This is just a sports event, and you are politicizing that. What say you? Uh, well, I think that the world should not be dignifying uh, mass murder, and to the outside world, you know that is a, a hallmark of the rule of the Communist Party. And uh, to be hosting the Olympics, it very much appears that the IOC is, you know, punching the ticket. Mm -hmm. or adding the, you know, the good housekeeping seal of approval mm -hmm. uh, onto that dictatorship, which holds the world's record for the, the most mass murder. In other words, it's a regime that has killed more people inside of China than Hitler with his regime, with all of World War II. Uh, the number of, of uh, dead is larger in China. So you are comparing uh, 2008 Olympic with 1938 Berlin Olympic? Well, yes, there's, a, there's definitely, um, you know, an analogy. Uh, it comes to mind the fact that Hitler did hold the Olympics uh, in Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. uh, and then three years later he started World War II. At the time of, you know, giving or, um, you know, granting the Olympics uh, to Berlin, the decision makers could not know about the death toll of World War II. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, for China's case, uh, the record of the Communist Party, you know, is, is a known historical fact. In other words, you know, the, the death toll is already 80 million Chinese people since the time that the Communist Party took power. This is really an inexcusable uh, a choice to host these Olympics mm, that's an interesting point uh, the, in a communist police right, state. Right. Now, the second very typical reaction from China side, they will say, you say, John Kuzumi is anti-China. Are you? No, no. No, in fact, uh, you know, originally I had no opinion about China, you know, towards the good or towards the bad, mm -hmm. and, and would never have really had a strong opinion one way or the other until the Tiananmen Square massacre flashed across our television screens. Uh, and that was a, a, you know, blazing display to the entire world, you know, of both an atrocious, you know, uh, crime against humanity, uh, you know, but also uh, the fact that it was done in broad daylight, you know, with no shame mm -hmm. whatsoever uh, on the part of the Communist Party. And so I said that that occasion, you know, was, um, you know, just as a miscarriage of, of government, and authority. It was, it was huge, it was epic, it was monumental, uh, it was egregious, mm -hmm. and it's not to be forgotten by history. Well, I have uh, the very similar opinion like yours, and because I was in Tiananmen Square in right. 1918, I was a college student, ah. so I saw everything with my own eyes. But now how does that make me anti-China? That, that's it, it does not. It does not. It does you know, not does really. Not. You know, uh, it, it, you know, the the uh, you know the phrase that you you mentioned that would be something that we well, hear I, I, I believe, from propagandists. Yeah, I believe that the, the Beijing will put the label on people because it's put a label on people and people. Well, let's remember to, that, that understand. they will say okay you are anti China you are China. Well, let's remember that the Communist right. Party is not China. Exactly. exactly. And, and China China is not the Communist Party. All right. And, and and very clearly we know that the Chinese government. Uh, is the place with the problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the Chinese people, and in fact, the Chinese government is not elected by the Chinese people. Right. Uh, so there's no legitimacy, you know, really to its presence uh, in power in the first place. That's right, and Beijing usually mix them together. They usually say, this person is anti-China, but usually that person does not like Communist Party. I'm one of them. I don't like Communist Party, but I love China. I love my country.